Hi, everybody. Now we're going to um, just look at some calculations in the Jupyter Notebook. And you can follow along with me while I do this. And I'm going to show you how you can use the Jupyter Notebook to do some basic calculations, some linear algebra calculations, and some plotting. Um, and this won't really be an introduction to Python, except as sort of a basic calculator tool. And if you've ever worked with MATLAB, in a certain sense, this is kind of like using the Jupyter Notebook as MATLAB as a kind of calculator. So um, let's take it away. I've launched Jupyter Lab here, and um, I'm going to open a new notebook by clicking on the Python 3 launcher. And as I've advised, the very first thing I'm going to do is right click on the tab on where the name is, choose rename the notebook, and call it something useful like basic computation demo, because otherwise I'm going to end up with a bunch of things called Untitled 1, Untitled 2, Untitled 3 in my uh, directory. Then I'm going to take my first cell and convert it to Markdown. And I'm going to put a header, basic computation demo, so that I, uh, I have a nice title for my um, uh, my Jupyter Notebook. And now, uh, before we can get down to real work, I'm going to do some magical incantations to load some libraries into the system to allow us to do linear algebra and plotting. And so the first one is to load the linear algebra library called NumPy. Python can't do linear algebra, or at least not much linear algebra by itself. NumPy is some library of functions that does linear algebra very efficiently, and we're going to want to use that. And you'll see the, the effect of this uh, shortly. So for now, you can treat it as a magic incantation. And then we're going to load the bokeh plotting library. Uh, again, you can treat this as a magic incantation. Um, this is going to load just enough of the library to let us um, actually plot. And we'll see later what that does. But um, you should get this nice note that says that Bokeh has been successfully loaded. So to start part one, I'm going to put in a subheader by making my next cell a markdown cell, use two pound signs, and I'm going to say simple calculations. So um, the sim we've already seen when we sort of started this up that you can type simple calculations like 3 plus 5 times 2 over 100 into uh, the Jupyter Notebook. And if you hit Shift Enter, it evaluates it. So 3 plus 5 times 2 over 100 is 3.1. But if you want to use some fancier functions, uh, sine, cosine, log, anything like that, then you use the numpy library. And that means that instead of just saying sine, you say np.sine. That means the sine function from the numpy library. And you could put in numpy sine of 2 and again hit shift enter. Uh, like you would expect, this is actually in radians. You do have access to pi. And so you could do, say, np.sine of np.pi over 6. Pi over 6 is 30 degrees, and so the sine of that is a little bit, I mean, it's really 0.5, but this is an approximation to it. And you have the square root and the log, the natural log. And um, so using those, you can do, um, I mean, sine, cosine, tangent, uh, square root, log, all of the uh, functions that you exponential function and that this is e to the power so there's e and um, in this way you can do a lot of uh, basic calculations now one thing that you might want to be able to do is to store intermediate calculations and for that you need variables so let me make a markdown cell here that says variables and a variable is uh, a holding place for the result of a calculation. And you can use any word or combination of letters and numbers to be a variable name, but it has to start with a letter. 
And there are certain words that aren't allowed, like if and then, which have other meanings. But let's do a simple one. Let's let a be np.log of 2. Now, you notice that now it doesn't print out the log of 2. Instead, it's assigned it to a. But if you refer to a, it's the log of 2. If you refer to 2 times a, it's 2 times the log of 2. And um, so in this way, you've got the log of 2 stored. If you wanted to do a more complicated calculation, you could say, for example, a equals 3 times np.x of 1 over sine np.sine of 3 times np.pi over 5. And, um, and now a is saved for you, and you can use it again later. Um, you can go back in the notebook if you make a mistake, and you can edit. If this should have been a 2, I can use the mouse. I can go back and put a 2 in there. And then a has the value that maybe that I wanted if it was supposed to be a 2. You can also put a comment in the cell by beginning with a pound sign and saying, here I calculate the magic constant. And that won't be evaluated, but it sometimes can help you label what's going on in a particular cell if you want to do that. These are simple variables, but you can also have variables that are lists. So in Python, a list is written with square brackets. So you could say, for instance, that a is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So then a is the list of 1 through 5. And you can refer to elements in a by indexing it. a bracket 0 is the first element of the list. a bracket 1 is the second element of the list. You can refer to a sublist by saying a bracket 2 colon 4. That means a bracket 2 and a bracket 3. So the range starts with 2, but it and it counts up, but does not include the last entry. So this is a bracket 2 and a bracket 3. Um, you can also uh, do a little trickery with the indices by counting from the end. If you say a bracket minus 1, that's the last element of the list. A bracket minus 2 is the second to the last element of the list. And if you really want to get fancy, you can say that you want to count from, let's say, the first element of the list to the fourth element of the list by 2. And that's going to give you the first element of the list and the third element of the list. So you have a lot of power in Python in talking about lists and sublists. You can also work with text. So let's talk about strings. I don't know why it sometimes makes me do that twice. So a string is uh, surrounded by either double or single quotes, and it's just a piece of text. And you can refer to elements of this piece of text just like it was a string. So, I mean, like it was a list. So f bracket 0 is the first element, f bracket 1 is the second element, f bracket 2 is the third element, and so on. Notice that the quotation marks here are really important. If you tried to say f equals here is a piece of string without the quotes, you get a, a syntax error because it the, doesn't really know what to do with this bunch of words. So if you, but if you put the quotes around it, then it's perfectly happy, and um, you get um, you get your text. You can do the same trickery with indices. F bracket minus one, for example, is the last uh, element of your string. Now, for what we're going to be doing. Um, in some ways, the most important thing is to be able to do linear algebra calculations. So let's talk about arrays. So an array is um, different from a list because, first of all, it can be more than one dimensional. But second of all, it, it's 
has numbers in it. Lists can have strings, they can have numbers, and they can be a mixture. And the way you create an array is you use numpy in the following way. Let's take the um, f and let's the variable f and let's define it to be np.array and we'll give it a list. How about minus three, minus three, three, eight, and ten. So if I now ask for f, it says that it's the array minus three, uh, three, eight, and ten. Now, when you have an array, you can do arithmetic on it. If you do three times f, it does element-wise multiplication. So it multiplies each element of the array by the constant that you are um, interested in. If you do, for example, one over f, then it applies that operation to each element of f. And if you do cosine of f, you take the cosine of each element of the um, of the array. So the operations that you're interested in are done element-wise. You can also do this with two arrays, provided they have uh, reasonable shapes. So for instance, if I make a new array, which is minus one, one, two, five, if I do f times g, then it does the element-wise product not the matrix product, the element-wise product. So you notice that minus one times minus three is three, one times three is three, two times eight is 16, five times 10 is 50. You could also add them together and get the element-wise sum. Um, arrays have a shape. Uh, this notation means that it's a row vector with four entries. And um, you can also make two-dimensional arrays and for that, you use nested loop lists. So you do it the following way. It's a list of lists where the inside here is a list of lists where each inner list is a row of the matrix. So if I do this and I ask for the matrix A, you see that it is a matrix where it has the entries one, two, three, four. And if I ask for its shape, it's a two by two matrix. When you have um, an array, you refer to, so remember here, F is this array, which is a four, a row vector with four elements, and A is this array, which is a two by two. Um, you can refer to elements by indices again. So F bracket zero is the first element of F, it's minus three. F bracket one is the second element. A bracket zero is gonna be the first row of A and a bracket one is gonna be the second row. A bracket zero, zero is the zero, zero of element as you would expect. But um, a better way to get at the elements of A is using the slice notation. And the way you do that is if you want an index to run over all possibilities, you put a colon in that position. So A colon bracket zero means the row can be anything, but the column has to be zero so this is a way of writing the first column of A. And A bracket colon comma one is the second column of A. A bracket zero colon is the first row. Earlier I showed you could do A bracket zero, but I find it less confusing to remind myself that there are columns and I'm just not keeping track of them. And A bracket one column colon is the um, second row. The, so everything's always indexed from zero. We could make a three by three matrix. And if we now look at B, it's a three by three matrix. Its shape is three by three. And its first column means the row can be anything and the column index is zero and that's our first column one two minus five our second our last column is one seven and two and just to remind you uh, if we make another three by three matrix let's let it be c If I do B times C, 
That means the element-wise product. It doesn't mean the matrix product. So B, remember, was this, and C was this. So B times C, you're just multiplying entry by entry. This is not normally what the times operator here means, element-wise multiplication. It isn't normally what we mean by um, matrix multiplication. So I'm going to continue this discussion in the next video and talk about linear algebra operations.